Hey everyone, I'm going face to face for this part of the lecture because I wanted to structure this part as more of just a chat of how far we've come. Because, it, you know, given that this is 348, this is probably one of the fastest paced classes in probably the entire curriculum, as far as I as, as far as I can tell, having actually gone through most of it as well. But um, we've already come really far in this class, so. Y'all should be proud of yourselves for even doing as well as you're able to. So what we've covered so far, we've talked about many types of discrete structures. Uh, we've gone over different types of numbers, which ones are discrete, which ones are not discrete. We've gone over sets, graphs, functions. Uh, we've done propositions, those true and false statements that are really going to make up a lot of the quarter. And predicates, the true or false statements if you substitute in values for variables the the or the functions that take in inputs and give us out propositions. So we've done a lot so far. Um, and yeah, y'all should be proud for sticking with it, especially, especially given the current circumstances. So uh, in class so far, we've actually had some really wonderful discussion about propositions, especially trying to figure out when propositions are true and when propositions are false. And, you know, a lot of points, great points have been made up about that. So like sometimes, hey, it depends on the time that the proposition is happening. For example, if I say it is raining right now, uh, currently it's not raining at the time of filming, but so that proposition is false at the time being, but then once it starts raining, probably, it, I don't know, eventually it'll start raining again. Hopefully it'll start raining again. And um, at that point, the proposition will become true. So we've talked a lot about that. We've talked a lot about proving quantified statements. How do we know if a quantified statement is true or false? So I think a great example of that is there exists an X such that for all Y, X is less than Y. We had to go through talking about, well, why is this false? How can we show that this is false? Talking about the implication of it being uh, well, if we if it were true, then there would be a lowest uh, real number, or also the process of showing that the negation is true, and thus that the original proposition is false. So we've had a lot of really great discussions, and a lot of that stuff has actually touched on the topic of proofs, which is all about, well, how do we know when a proposition is true? So... That's what this video is all about. We're going to introduce ourselves to the topic of proofs. Uh, I'm not actually going to go through any proofs in this one, so this is just going to be a short video talking about what a proof is. And then I'll start going right into direct proofs in the next video. So in the next video, we'll actually start seeing examples of what some proofs look like for different types of discrete structures. But in this video, I just want it to be more of a, this, these are some of the guidelines for what I'm expecting for your proofs. This is what a proof actually is, and this is why a proof is important. Okay, so all a proof really is, is it's just a valid argument establishing the truth of a statement. Now, I know this is a pretty vague definition, so I'm going to do my best to really explain, you know, what I'm expecting from you in terms of proofs and what makes a proof, say, a really good proof. But really, at the core of it, a proof is a valid argument just establishing the truth of a statement. So we can break this definition down a little bit. A valid argument means that, you know, the argument is correct, that you aren't making any assumptions that are bad. You know, you're starting out with the assumptions that you need and then building off of those assumptions to show the results that you're looking for at the end. Establishing the truth, we're basically always going to use a proof to prove something true. Now, it is possible to actually use a proof to prove that a statement is false, but really the best way of going about that is instead just showing that the negation is true. So we're, we're still establishing the truth of the negation of a statement, and then by doing that, we're then showing that the original statement is false. But what I really want to point out that is that no matter what, we're always showing that a statement is true. So really, that's all a proof is. We're just establishing that a statement is true, that a proposition has the truth value true? So a proof is kind of a vague thing, you know. It's a it's just a sequence of arguments that helps show that a statement is true. So 
what I like to do is actually like to say, hey, well, this is what a good proof is. And when I'm saying good proof, you can probably imagine this is what I'm going, these are the criteria upon which I am going to be grading your proofs. So I do recommend that you pay attention to this because this is important. So the first criteria that I see of a good proof is that it is correct. Um, I think that probably sounds a little bit obvious, but I'll go into what I expect from a correct proof a little bit more. So by a proof being correct, not only should your logic be sound, you know, not only should your logic work, but you also have to demonstrate why your logic works. And that's a really important part of a proof. So not only should your proof have good logic, but you should also back up your arguments by saying, well, this is why. This is the evidence that shows why my proof is correct. And you shouldn't be doing any logical jumps. So what I mean by no logical jumps is let's say you're starting off at point A and you're trying to get to point C. But A doesn't directly go to C because you have point B in the middle of it. So in order to go from A to C, you have to traverse through point B in order to get to point C. So I'm going to go from A to B to C like that. So this would be what I expect from a correct proof. You, you know A, and then you go from A to B, showing uh, while also showing evidence for why you can go from your knowledge in A to your knowledge of B. And then you go from knowledge of B to knowledge of C while showing your evidence why this is a correct assumption that you can make. What I mean by a logical jump is instead, if you go directly from A to C, and you don't say, okay, well, I needed to go to B in order to go from A to C. The problem with this is that often this leads to, you know, a reader saying something like, well, how did you do this? I don't know. I don't understand how you're able to go directly from A to C. So I really can't tell if your points are valid or not. And that's a big problem. This also goes into the accessibility part of a good proof, which I'll get into in a minute. But you have to be able to justify your entire path of knowledge from A to C. Otherwise, if you can't really do that, then the proof is kind of pointless. So, and to sum up this whole point of correct, not only should your arguments be correct, not only should they be right, but also you should show the evidence that tells a reader why they are correct. Now, the second part of a good proof is accessibility. And I've gone over this a little bit already with uh, propositions and logical equivalencies and stuff like that. But the baseline that I want you to use is that you should put in enough information so that anybody who's in this class and has the prerequisite knowledge of being in this class should be able to read your proof without having to be say, well, why did you do this? How did you know that you could do this and stuff like that? You should give enough justifications that someone in this class can read through and completely understand your argument. Now, the reason why I advocate so much for accessibility is because it's really important to be able to, to clearly justify why your methods work, why your knowledge is correct to other people. This is true for working in industry. It's especially true for working in research. And oh my God, is it true for being a teacher? Um, I want, as, especially as a teacher, I really want to make sure that people aren't left questioning why something is true. And I definitely, the last thing I want people to think is, oh, okay, well, I can assume that is true just because the professor said it. You all, my goal for you all is to completely understand all the material that I present without having to sort of say, okay, well, I'll just believe it just because the uh, professor said it. Uh, so I, I guess as a quick aside, um, please don't just believe things because I say it. Ask me questions. Ask me to show why it's true. I'm more than happy to do that. And it's a great exercise for both me and for you. So I want, I, I would love it if y'all ask tons of questions. Okay. But that, that, that aside, um, accessibility is really important. Uh, something that I've worked, something that I've learned from working in groups that are really diverse in terms of what people know and all that is that it's really important to be able to talk about your knowledge, you know, talk about this is why this is correct. This is why I think we should make this decision and stuff like that, especially to people who maybe don't have the same knowledge as you, you know, in real life, you'll be working a lot with a 
with a lot of people with different backgrounds and you'll want to collaborate you'll want to bring your knowledge together in order to come up with the best possible solution for a scenario so it's really important to be able to explain what you know ex explain what you think is the right decision or the justification for why what you're saying is true as plainly as possible so honestly i think practicing good accessibility in your proofwriting practicing making your proofs look as nice and easy to read as possible is probably one of the best um most important uh probably most generally useful skill that all of you will take out of this class because even if you don't go into research even if you're not writing mathematical proofs for the rest of your life after this class it's so important to be able to justify your explanations of you know your statements and all that uh, i guess another quick aside is that i think the ability to justify hey well this is why this statement is true and also to critically evaluate my own beliefs and statements and say okay, well, based on the facts, is what I think actually true or did I make a mistake somewhere and do I need to um, review what I thought was true? That skill is extremely important and is super helpful. So the last thing I wanna cover in this video is talking about what a theorem is. So a theorem is really just a statement that can be shown to be true. So a proposition is actually a type of theorem. We consider them to be sort of less important theorems. So I'm talking about things like it is raining outside. It's a pretty trivial theorem to prove because we can say either, yes, it is currently raining outside or no, it is not raining outside whatsoever. So we've been talking a lot about propositions and propositional logic and stuff like that, but really all of that logic and stuff like that, this can be applied to our general theorem, our general statements that can be shown to be true. For example, if we know that two theorems are true, then the theorem that basically combines those two smaller ones with an and is another theorem, and that theorem is also true. Uh, we have things like lemmas, which are theorems that we prove that help us prove larger theorems. We have corollaries, which are, hey, let's say we proved one theorem, and then we have another theorem that can be proved directly as a result of the first theorem. So that's what we would call a corollary. And I'll go over all of these again as we as we see them. We will see lemmas and corollaries uh, a lot in this in the quarter, so I'll I'll be sure to remind you all what a lemma and a corollary is. And then an axiom is basically it's a type it's a theorem that we consider to be a fundamental truth in mathematics. So for example, zero is a natural number is an axiom, or if n is a natural number, then n plus 1 is a natural number. That's another axiom. So these are the ones that we consider to be fundamental rules that we build all of our mathematical knowledge off of. So our axioms are, we assume these to be true, and because we can assume a certain set of theorems to be true, then we can start building new mathematical logic off of those axioms. So I get the question a lot. Well, how do we know that axioms are true? Why can we just say that they're true? And, that's, and the answer is, is that, well, we really can just say that they're true. We're, we're just, we have to really have a baseline of some, something we assume to be true before we can really build our mathematical logic further. Now, the thing with axioms is that they are kind of developed iteratively and they're developed based off of the natural laws of the universe in, in a way that we see them. So our series of axioms are based off of centuries, maybe even millennia, or more even, like a very, very long time of mathematical experimentation and knowledge, which is why we have our mathematical axioms that also happen to represent real life really well. So these are the results of mathematical work a very, very long time ago, and we found these axioms to be so strong and compelling in terms of how they represent real life and how well they work for how and how well they work to build other mathematical knowledge off of that we just don't consider them to this day. That's not to say that axioms will never change. We've actually had axioms defined very recently in terms of mathematical knowledge, some of which we'll talk about later in the class, like the piano axioms. But usually those are axioms that were defined to, defined to talk about mathematical phenomena that we've sort of understood to be true.
before those axioms were made. So I guess in short, axioms are the fundamental rules and every piece of mathematical knowledge that we can really talk about were based on a relatively small set of fundamental axioms. If that's the kind of stuff you're interested in, uh, some number theory classes and some abstract algebra classes, it depends on the professor, but a lot of them will actually recreate that sort of build up from axioms and nothing else to getting the ideas of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and all kinds of stuff. It's a really fascinating journey to take, and I highly recommend that for anyone who's uh, really curious about playing with theorems and seeing, you know, seeing how that goes. So that's the what was supposed to be a brief introduction to proofs. I haven't seen how long this video is, but it feels like a 30 minute video already. So in the next video, we'll start talking about uh, different types of proofs because there are actually many ways to show that statements are true. So we'll, we'll talk about those different types and yeah, just sort of try to have some fun with it. So I'll see you all in the next video.